Hey everyone, what I'd like to do today is talk about Xiaomi Hyper OS. This is Xiaomi's Android skin, their customization of Android. And as of 2024, it's what they're putting on all of their devices. So this is my new Xiaomi 14T Pro. And like all Xiaomi devices, when you boot up the phone, it will say Xiaomi Hyper OS. So this is my first experience of using this operating system. So I want to talk about it in this video. If I quickly jump over to the browser, you can see that it unifies my UI, Xiaomi's Vila OS, Mina OS, and their car-focused operating system. I know I'm pronouncing these wrong. And it debuted about a year ago, and it is replacing my UI gradually as of 2024. Now, if you've watched my channel before, you be aware that I've had I think this is my fourth or fifth Xiaomi phone. So I've had a, a few Xiaomi phones in the past and they all used my UI. And I thought it was okay. It wasn't the cleanest, but it didn't have too much bloatware. It was kind of somewhere in between. So I do have some experience with Xiaomi before, but this is new. Okay, so there's a few things I want to talk about in this video. The first one being... Themes. Let's talk about themes first. It's not the most important thing, but I want to talk about it because in my unboxing video the other day, my first impression of the phone was that it was dull. And I wasn't talking about the phone, its design, or even the AMOLED display. I was talking about the fact that Xiaomi selected this weird black and grey wallpaper, which it's not a bad design. It just doesn't really show off what this display can do. So earlier on today, I went into the Themes app, and this is one of the default apps that you get. And you'll see different themes here. Obviously, if you've got a theme, it will change, you know, the wallpaper, the icons, the you know, the, the it changes everything. It gives you a totally new look and feel. Uh, some are paid, but some are free. But what I did earlier on was go in and just change the wallpaper. So, you know, you can see there's different categories like lovely flowers here and yeah these are all kind of free to download Machu Picchu it's actually about 11 12 years ago I was there myself fantastic place to visit oh cannot connect to the network that's not good and um, let's go for a mountain okay so there's a few different options here as you can see when I go for this one you click apply lock screen home screen let's do both and we now have a new wallpaper Quite a nice thing to add. Okay, before we start talking about other apps, I just want to clarify the ad situation, which is something that you kind of have to talk about. What Xiaomi do to keep the price down, and they've been very open about the fact this is the business model, is that they will display ads in your phone. That's not good. No one wants that. But um, if I go into the settings area and I click add, you will see this message, personalize ads. You can personalize the ads to be relative to what you want, or you can see I've deselected it. But one of the key things here is says that the ads from Xiaomi and third-party platforms, however, will not be relevant. Okay, the key thing here is that the ads are on Xiaomi apps. They're in Xiaomi apps. I've been you know, moving around the phone, trying out different apps. I've not actually seen an advertisement yet, but my understanding is that the ads here are basically with their system apps. And you can see here, improving user experience, etc. So it's not ideal. I don't like the fact that ads are even in the equation, but it seems to be only with their system apps. They've got a lot of different system apps to help you, like Samsung and every other Android company out there, every phone company. Um, but there is a way to disable them, I believe, through the services, etc. But it is something you have to be aware of. It is something that they've built into their system apps. It's not a problem for me, per se. It's not something I really notice after a while, but it's there. You have to talk about it. Okay, so I have a list of different apps. I've been through all the all the apps on the phone here. When you first put it up, there's a few extra apps here because in the unboxing video, I removed Opera, Booking.com, Facebook, TikTok, AliExpress. And that kind of sums up what's going on here because... Like about half the apps can be removed and about half cannot because they're system apps. And 
System apps, well, that's something that we all have to live with. And if I go over to my iPhone, you can see that even on my iPhone, what I've done is just create a folder with all the Apple apps that I never use, but they're there and I can't get rid of them. So I've stuck them all in one folder. And that's what I do with Samsung phones as well. Stick them all in one area. And that's what I would do with Xiaomi as well. If there's apps I don't want, I will just stick them all in one area out of the way. But let's look at some of the apps here. This is the, the front screen. This obviously can move them about. This is what you get when you set up the 14T Pro. We've got the gallery, app mall, Xiaomi home, settings. We've seen themes already, me browser and the Play Store. Now, what I would say about that is I think the themes apps are actually quite good. You know, there's a lot of good wallpapers there and there's themes there as well. Yes, there's paid ones, but there's free ones as well. Xiaomi home is not something I'm going to be using. But unlike all of these other ones, uh, this one's for connecting to smart devices. Unlike the other ones here, you can remove this one. So if you want, you can delete the app. With the App Store or the App Mall, you cannot. Now, I will say right off the bat, I don't like this kind of approach. I understand, you know, why companies do it, give you their whole personalized experience, etc. But when I opened up Me Store, and Me Store is... I mean, it's a, a glorified browser, really, in an app. It's just showing you the, the the Xiaomi store where you can, you know, look at the latest Xiaomi products. When I loaded that app up, it talked about the fact that it had to be updated and you had to go into the, the settings area and allow third-party apps to be installed. And that's because this is their own app store. And I don't see the need for that. I don't want to update apps in a second store. I want to update everything through Google Play, but that's what they've got. You can see update your apps here. I don't want to go through that. I don't want to use it. I'd rather just use the Google Play Store, but it's there. Uh, one thing to note though, is that when you open up this app for the first time, it does say, do you agree to these terms, etc." I did not agree. But I did select agree. And the reason being, I wanted to show you this in the video. I wanted to try each of these apps. But I will be resetting this phone again. And I will not be agreeing next time. I don't want to use this. I just don't believe in these kind of second stores in general that kind of navigate Android security system of installing unknown sources. You, you need to know what those sources are. I'm not saying that Xiaomi are doing anything dodgy here. I don't think there's anything to be worried about. I just, as a rule, I don't like it. The home screen here as well, you can see there are a lot of Google apps here. And some of these cannot be removed. Obviously, like the Google cannot be removed. It's just an Android thing. Uh, Google News can be removed. Bitbit can be removed. So about, you know, there's a few of these apps that can be removed, a few cannot. It's kind of like half and half. And um, I'll leave a list of them so that you know which ones can be removed, etc. And then we've got other apps here as well. Bizarrely, the Mi Store, as I said, is, is just a link to their store that you can log in, etc. That can be removed. Netflix can be removed. All of these apps here, Amazon, WPS, WPS Office, they can all be removed. Uh, Game Center cannot because that's a system app. I think they've just left it out of system apps because it's, you know, they want to show you where it is, to make it more prominent. Uh, but bizarrely, Google YouTube, YouTube Music, Google Gemini, they cannot be removed. Then we've got system apps and I've got a list of the system apps here. And to be honest, most of them can be removed. The ones that cannot be removed are security, uh, file manager, music there, and downloads and services and feedback. And that's kind of common. You can remove calculator and compass. All these apps can be removed if you wish. And, yeah, it's one of those things. I mean, personally, I like the, the idea of being able to remove certain apps, such as the security app. You may try out a different security app. I do realize why they don't allow it, though, because, you know, take the file manager, for example. Um, if, if you delete the file manager and then you've not installed another file manager from the Play Store, then now you don't have a file manager on your phone. So... Yeah, I get it. I, I do realize why certain things are there. The default apps, they have to be there. But for the most part, a lot of these apps can be removed if you just don't want to use them, if you don't need the scanner, etc. So as far as all of that goes, as far as the app situation goes, 
it's okay. It's not the cleanest operating system, the cleanest skin of Android. I don't like that they add junk like Facebook and TikTok into your brand new phone. I've just paid for the phone. I don't want all of that. But they've said, listen, this is how we keep the price down. It's not really a big problem, really, because all these apps can be removed. The, the kind of third party ones. But the system apps uh, cannot. Don't like that app mall. I just don't like the premise of it. <laughs> okay, let's pull down the top drawer here. So this is what you see when you pull it down and you can see, you know, the internet, music playing, home, uh, brightness level and different things. Now, one thing to note here is that it's not very clear what these icons are, but if you push edit, you will see what is available. And I remember my first, I remember my first Android phone years ago and they had like five different options and then they gave you like another five that you could add or remove. But look how many are here. There's quite a big selection here. Now, there are some things I would maybe move down as a priority. You know, I don't need Scanner, for example, or Quick Share in my top drawer. But there's a lot of really good ones down here as well. Performance mode, lock screen, dark mode for nighttime, do not disturb, ultra battery saver. That's actually one of my favorite features in an Android phone. When I go out with friends or a night out, I don't want to be checking my phone all the time so I put that on so that at the end of the night when I'm getting a taxi I have some battery in my phone so it's quite good that that's there and then there's some app toggles as well bedtime mode focus mode etc so quite good I, I, I like that there's a good selection here I like this very customizable and I like all the different options that are here these are options that I will use so yeah that's good I'm looking forward to setting that up in the way that I want uh, when I get everything set up because as you can see here so far I don't have the sim card in I've not transferred any apps over the phone is naked so this is the settings area and I do think this looks really clean it looks cleaner than my UI did and it's kind of a standard affair here if you've you know you used an Android phone before you kind of know what to expect here and Go to about, you'll see the storage. I've got the one terabyte model. Quite ridiculous how much storage that is. Um, you've got apps updater there as well. You can get system updates and different things. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, interconnect uh, connectivity. So if you want to kind of mimic what Apple does as far as their whole experience of using an iPhone and an iPad, You've got that here. And this is quite a good idea. This is something, you know, at the moment I have an iPhone. I'm going to be switching to this, but I do have an iPad Pro as well. And I've been using the iPad Pro, Pro before where a call comes in and then on your iPad, you get a call. And there's lots of options, options like that here where if you're using a Xiaomi tablet, you can continue tasks in, in another device, home screen plus, clipboard, call sync. Like I was saying, you can answer the phone. So. If you have multiple Xiaomi devices, a Xiaomi tablet, etc., you can use, opt into all of these uh, options here, all these features. Not for everyone. I think it's a nice little feature. I think it's good. And if you do have multiple Xiaomi devices, I'm sure you're going to like those. But apart from that, it's kind of a standard Android experience here as far as how it, it is to use. Uh, first time you set this up, I would just go through them all and just, you know, see what you like, what you don't like, etc. I covered this in that video the other day, but one of the things I really do like about this phone is that, yes, it has a fingerprint lock and the fingerprint lock is really good, but it also has face unlock and the face unlock is really good as well. Um, so if I do that, it goes to a tick and then I can just go up. I like that this has face unlock and fingerprint lock, so that can be set up there. You can set up multiple uh, fingerprints, etc. Security and privacy, different options there as well. So yeah, I, I, I like the look of this. I think it's, it's quite a clean design, quite minimal, and overall, I think it's quite nice. The last thing I want to show you is the camera. And at this point, I, you know, I have to put the hands up. You got me. I haven't really used the camera yet. I've not, you know, beyond taking a few quick photos in the house, I want to spend time with the camera going out, taking photos and videos and playing around with it. But I just want to quickly show you the photo app because 
One of the things I noticed right away is that you can change between the different lenses, etc. Um, we've got three lenses at the back, Leica, and you can change there. You can see Leica, what does that say? Sorry, that disappeared. Leica Vibrant, Leica Authentic. So you can have the kind of default um, look and feel, or you can apply a kind of style. But we've got a pro mode here. You know, controlling the aperture, the ISO, etc. We've got a movie option, we've got video, HDRs, an option there, 720p, 1080p, 30 and 60. Um, photo mode, portrait as well. And look at that, you can change the different lens being used, 23mm, 35 uh, documents, and then more. And you can see there's a few different options there, time lapse, panorama, night mode, long exposure, slow motion, 50 megapixels, director mode, dual video and short video. And one of the, the oh, that's quite cool. I didn't notice that before. Uh, one, one thing that I am interested in trying is dual video, you know, as, as a YouTuber. Uh, I like the idea of showing the double chin there. But I think this is quite an interesting mode that you can be out and about and you can be recording yourself and then the audience or the other person can see what you're looking at. Quite interesting. And, you know, it's something I might end up using, you know, just for friends and family, you know, show them something, pull a funny face and record where I am. But um, yeah, I like the idea of dual video. I think that's quite cool. So overall, I think the camera app looks quite good. So this has been my first look and my first impression of Xiaomi Hyper OS, this skin of Android. I am approaching this at this point as someone who hasn't set up the phone yet. I've not taken it out. I've just been messing about with the phone and looking at the apps over the last few days. My first impressions are, it looks okay. It's a, it's a nice clean skin. There isn't too much bloatware. There are some apps, but you can remove them. There are some system apps, but Apple, Samsung, Everyone does that. Um, I, I don't like the fact that ads are even in the equation, but it does seem to be limited to the Xiaomi apps. And I don't like App Mall. I just don't like the idea of it. I don't understand why they can't just put their Me app in the Google Google Play Store, but that's how they've set things up. The, the thing, the, I mean, it's, it's not too annoying because things like that can be removed. I do want a cleaner experience. I do want to put my own apps on it. But what will inevitably happen when I transfer apps open uh, over is that I'm going to have, you know, folders and folders and folders of all the different apps that I've got. And all of these apps will just be in a Xiaomi folder, which I don't look at at all. So, yeah, th this has been my first, this has been my first impression of Xiaomi Hyper OS. Let me know what you think about it. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment area. I'd love to hear from those of you who have never used HyperOS, but I also want to hear from Xiaomi users who are using it on a daily basis. So please do leave a comment. Thanks for watching and until next time, take care.